12 years we haven't had long as well. We haven't had that for about seven years. So you guys want to go kind of do like the gear breakdown and then we'll go right into the everything yeah, along. You tell us. Place. Cool. Let's do that. Let's go in the garage and get your gear set up okay. there. Okay. So each llama has their own saddle. And this bungee, this is how you connect them. They're pretty simple. Um, and basically when you're weighing out the panniers, you always touch the back when you're done, make sure there's nothing poking them. Take care of your llama like you take care of yourself. When you're hungry, they're hungry. When you're thirsty, they're thirsty. When you're tired, they're tired. So we're only going with one bucket of pellets yeah, for food up there? Yep. They, they eat, obviously, they yeah. graze and stuff. Forward, they graze. Yeah. He's about 365 pounds, so he's kind of tall and lean. He's one of our taller llamas. So Chris, go ahead and take a couple of these. Well, llamas are big. I don't know, it took me, it took me a second to kind of get used to them. <laughs> I grew up in California and I didn't grow up around like livestock and I have very little experience around horses, so definitely novice when it comes to stuff like that. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> He's testing the waters. He's going for it. <laughs> <laughs> Start from up here, from while I'm talking. This is not something that I grew up doing or anything like that. A very serious hunter, no. I'm not a complete novice, but definitely not a hardcore anywhere near Brady. I'm gonna go let down, let it down a little bit more, way down. It's comforting going with somebody of his expertise level. Um, my goal was to just kind of listen and not get in his way. Good boy, Donnie. Yeah, Donnie's your boy. And then you just watch that door and I'll come out with the leads. Come on. Come on. You want some water? Hey. Hey, buddy. That place hard to get. Wanna? Bro, we're gonna kick it for eight days, man. Can you talk to me? He like avoids the bike hunt. Taking the llamas was very beneficial for Porter to want to go on a backpack style hunt like this because you know he's not too experienced at all. He only had one other backcountry hunt beforehand, so this was a way to get Porter back there and to get him feeling comfortable because he could have all the comforts of home. He could have a nice sleeping system. He could have really awesome food. I'm not gonna lie, this is like the first time I ever had like tortellinis and pesto every night, tons of sausages in the backcountry. Like that stuff I don't bring on a backcountry hunt. So it's kind of a nice aspect that Porter came along and we had llamas just so we could enjoy all those other comforts. trailhead and looking up it was you know blue skies and the weather the last weather update we got they weren't calling for any you know bad weather we couldn't really see how much snow was up on top the way the mountain was and we got up there and I was uh, a little a little nervous in the back of my mind like well what did I just throw Porter into I just wanted to make a, a fun hunt for Porter and we threw him right into the right into the wolves right away Something's going on. We saw one dead deer. We saw some hunters looking for another one. So one a little concern has been shot up. It's late in the season. Not sure what's going on. It's still early in the hunt, but try to figure out what's going on.
where he lost a mitten and it went rolling all the way down the mountain in the snow. Literally all the way down. What I really want to do, Porter, is see down into those trees. Yeah. From like over there a little bit. It's hard to see that now. Isolation. The evening developments have not panned out to much. I don't know, I might get her the morning and then maybe go back to camp tomorrow and then pack out. Not enough vegetation. I definitely need to move. And then they got some food, but there's just too much snow. Port doggy special here. My Monday night Italian night. Sweet sausage uh, tortellini with a little fresh basil pesto. Makes up for the tough day we had today. Getting that jet well figured out now? Oh yeah. Or do you want to go up on this ridge just behind camp? No. You want to go two ridges over? Yeah. way up where I thought a buck would be in the snow. Doesn't look very giant though. First somewhat decent buck of the trip. An elk. We just saw 15 elk. We've seen three or four bulls today. We've basically seen everything except what we're looking for. Conditions are perfect. The bugs are tempered up. We're getting our butts kicked. I told Brady that he was probably going to be teaching me a lot of things in the backcountry, but I teach him how to eat good. I don't want to be negative. I'm just I'm, plan I'm a planner. Tomorrow's not good. What the hell do we do? Grind it out. Where? Start still hunting the timber.
doesn't feel like the density is great up here. Nope. And as far as we're glassing. Yeah. Doe numbers are good. I mean, decent. I usually don't see a lot of does. I've seen a lot of does. Like that group yesterday, nine does on one hillside. Yeah. That's a lot. You think they might have got demolished early? No, like demolished by like the winter kill. There's not enough hunters up here to like make it so you can't shoot anything or see anything. Yeah, right, 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 right. A nice little torch. Oh, teepee time, oh, teepee time. You want me to sing, Brady Jack? I did. But singing the song about teepee makes me think you're singing the song about going to the bathroom. No, we're in teepee, bro. Get your head out of the gutter. Fox, Fox, where are you? Fox, Fox. Plan for this evening is, I think we're going to split up, which I don't like doing. But this morning was a wash, so we can't really cross off the area this morning because of the snowstorm. Supporter's gonna go over there. I'm gonna kinda go up where we were last night and just go up further in the basin and see if they're in the snow still. Like I'm gonna go deep up there and just try to pick them apart in the timber and see what we can find. And we'll uh, regroup and figure out where the bucks are for tonight, hopefully. Uh, Sounds actually really good. I saw uh, five bucks and like nine or eleven some eleven does. Um, one four by four. Another what looked like pretty big four by four, but he's like a mile away. That's the buck we're gonna go after tomorrow. He's looking up. I actually seen bucks. I'll be honest, when I hunt with people and I try to tell them where we want to go, I definitely downplay a lot of what's going on. I don't know if it's actually my intention right away. If I speak calm, they're going to be calm and just go with the flow and understand that, you know, what I'm doing is still safe and we're still going to make it there. You know, we started moving that direction early in the morning and, uh, you know, bumped into a couple bucks, passed a couple bucks. Are you seriously going to shoot them? Me? No. Dude, this literally was born like six months ago, bro. What do you think I am? <laughs> and we just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And I remember going kind of Brady, like, hey, how much farther around? Oh, just around this bend. Oh, just see that, the, this, this, the top of this ridge right here? We'll just hit that top and roll right over. And he said that like four ridges in a row. And we had left at, at dawn from camp. We didn't finally get to the actual spot where he wanted to be until oh, like three in the afternoon. He's almost like, he almost doesn't think rationally up there. It, 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 he's so focused on the end goal. I think in his head he knew what that day was going to entail. He was so confident that we were going to kill a buck that, I mean, he, he had saw it the night before and he's, it's just a matter of getting over to it. We got in there and everything just looked perfect. We saw a bunch of does really close to us down below. We had the whole evening to sit there in glass. We're close, we can make plays from here. Like everything was pointing to, okay, let's just, we'll just wait, glass them, do what you know, we do best and the deer will come out when the deer will come out because we're in the zone now. The country was perfect for deer. You see the, uh, the last pine trees just to the left of it, it just fell out. Yeah. Yes? Let's go on. 
a bass. Come check him out, he's pretty wide. Is he good buck? Yeah, come on, look at him. Just try to see if I can get steady with the long poke. Yeah, because if you go to that knob, you're too low, right? Yeah, you won't be able to see him. I don't know if we can scoot down this way. It's like, what's he doing right now? Is he like staring at a mouse or something? Head. It's like a decent buck. Yeah. The mass is what's really cool about him. He's just love. He just carries it everywhere. Do you like what's he doing right now? I don't know. He literally hasn't moved. He doesn't look like he's chewing. No. Unless he can't. Because of the growth, he might be chewing really weird. Is it meat safe to eat? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Look at his face. See the big growth? See what I'm talking about? Kinda. Looking right here, the definition underneath its jaw. It's, it's, not, it's supposed to be a straight line. Yeah, he looks all weird. Yep, 778. Over 14.7. Yeah. Alright. Alright, maybe we'll get set up here. You can take one? Yeah. <sighs> yes! wasn't this open shoot now they're moving to some timber so just gotta wait him out see if he comes back out in the open so he can take a shot early Yeah, you got him. Such a <laughs> such a shot. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this back here, I was trying, I was about to kill you. Oh, my hero. My gosh, dude, that was <sighs> took forever to transpire. We worked our ass out. <laughs> 780 yards. <laughs> you smoked him. so hard <laughs> and I don't know what day it is we have like what two days left and we've seen probably six bucks the entire trip and they've all been really really small Funny. first really good opportunity the, the furthest from camp I love Wyoming these mule deer make you work for it oh dude can't Ooh. believe you dragged his dad back back here the whole time it was like noon and I was like uh, how m one more basin over? One more basin over? You're like, dude, it's flying tonight. We're, we're shooting a deer tonight. Guaranteed. It. Guaranteed. It. You just kept that. saying that. Kind of believed you, actually. Good for you, man. Congratulations. It's a hell of a buck. Thank you.
He's not very uh, fat. A little spindly. I think this growth is hurting his eating. We have a long way to camp. We dropped way too much elevation. It's gonna get dark on us. And yeah, I think we're just gonna pack him over to llamas instead of bringing the llamas here. I'm pretty sure I slept past noon and I could have slept even more. Like I was just, just drained. Like the body was just torn apart. And I remember we would go like 10 or 15 feet and then have to stop. And then 10 or 15 feet and then stop. I, it must have taken us two hours to go 500 yards maybe. Today has been a lazy day. When you proposed to make a fire and just post up for the night, yeah, that's when I was like, and my headlamp had already died. Luckily, I had a backup, and we were concerned about your headlamp dying. And then what do we do? Because we have no headlamps. We had no batteries with us, extra batteries. Dumb. Yeah, there's some lessons there. Another day in paradise. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Better grab hold of that side. I'll go out there and fix her. Whoa. It is harsh out there, boys. Beautiful, huh? Yeah. Gorgeous, nice day. Gorgeous out, yep. Visibility's about 20 yards. Blowing about 40. Reinforced teepee with so many rocks. Yeah. Oh. What's happening with our fire? Well, I'm not doing great. It's a little bit of snow. We might have to wake up every couple hours tonight and do that. I have to go shovel the llama's food. Really? A little bit. A little tortilla. Top of the stove. So a lot of combinations you can do with tortillas. I'm gonna to show you one. So this is one. Get that tortilla nice and warm. Pesto. And then you stack it with a bunch of salami. A little pesto salami panini. We've had a lot of good uh, mental breaks today. Collecting your thoughts, breaking wood, eating. Not to, we didn't do a single lick of hunting. Can you imagine being a deer right now? Cold. Yeah. Last morning, we better connect tomorrow. Last day, Ace. His conditions are gonna be as good as they get. The deer were snowed in all day. The morning hunt should be as good as it gets. Should be the best day we've had. So we're gonna hunt it hard. So I said, we'll call it. If we have a bad morning hunt, we'll call it and hike out that afternoon. The elk are feeding for her. I think they need their deer. Oh, they're up right now. They had storm in over the history. To me, I really want to stay as much as I could, as long as we could, to help Porter kill a buck, because this is like his biggest backcountry hunt ever. That's all I want to do is to give him a buck. The good news is I found our found our eighth buck of the trip. <laughs> the bad news is he's a two by two. <laughs> Ooh. And the other bad news is he's literally mile and a half, mile and three quarters straight line. So we have two, we have two points acting like they're 200 inch deer at the top. At the top, yeah. The deepest, nastiest canyons. In the deep snow, yeah. Got it. At the same time, you know, we didn't see a lot of deer, so ultimately, you know, it might have been the right decision to pack out. Yeah, you like those, buddy. First time having mule deer in the backcountry on the mountain. Very shortly after I killed it. So 
there's nothing better. So good. Look, I could sit out here and eat a whole back trap. I'm lucky to be able to go with Brady and for him to share so much of his knowledge with me. And he's got 20 years of experience in the backcountry. I mean, I asked him probably 120 dumb questions. I tried to soak it up like a sponge. Yes, I wish I killed the buck, but I was coming out of there with my head high. Porter after this hunt is a guy who will tackle any sort of mountain hunting situation and be able to excel at it. Um, he was really green before, but basically he saw every single type of struggle you could have on a hunt in a full nine days. Now going forward, he's just gonna be that much better of a hunter. He's mentally stronger than I think he even knew he would come out of the hunt being. It was, it was a blast to see him, see him evolve throughout the whole hunt from the beginning of the day till the end of the hunt. He's a to he was a totally different person. And I know now going into his future hunts, he's gonna, he's gonna crush all of them.